It's really easy to assume based on all of our experiences with customer support. The role of AI in customer support is to reduce the amount of human touch points. This is a trap. In our experience, the winners in the customer support AI space are not the ones that reduce human touch points, but actually the ones that get better, faster help and get the right people in touch with what they need. All right, and in this video, we're not just gonna go through like a how-to tutorial. This is a more strategic approach where we go at the risk. What's the risk of doing this? What's the risk of not doing it? Is my team actually gonna be prepared to push this through? Are they gonna support it? Are they fearful of being replaced by AI or not? How do we make sure everybody's pulling the same way, right? ROI, how do we make sure we find the right thing to build? Customer experience as well. The goal of this, as I said in the beginning, is not to push people away, but to bring them in and have them have a great experience by working with you guys. And lastly, time to value. How do we make sure we get returns, not just in, you know, six months to a year, but actually in weeks and quarters? We'll go through everything here. By the end of the video, you should have answers to all these questions. Let's get into the actual process. We built this AI advisor called Max for this company called Income Max. Basically what they do is they find people with financial problems, find the right help, the right support structures to help them, you know, solve these problems. They have transport problems, they have healthcare problems, they have housing problems. How do we make sure that these people find the right help. That's what they do. Okay, so what did we do? When we build Max, we build a friendly advisor that qualifies people that are coming into their system. It's not just about qualifying, but it's about collecting the right data, understanding their problems, giving them some advice, and then routing them to the right human. The goal is to hand them to the human, because most of this work is actually relationship-driven work. You know, we're dealing with people with problems. You need to make sure they get that emotional connection. So by helping people and teaching them, hey, this is where you're going, and using AI to qualify them, go through them, have a conversation with AI before having a conversation with a customer, they're actually getting results faster than they would by having to wait on the phone. And by implementing this, like I said, we've got a 10 to one return on investment from their side to help that people receive. The other thing that we found wasn't just that Income Max got a 25% increase in efficiency, but also that around 40% of people were reaching out at after hours, after 5 p.m. You know, having 24 seven call support is expensive, but by using AI, you can have an agent that's 24 seven there waiting for you, waiting for the clients without extra cost, right? So we're actually meeting people where they are at the time that they're ready to talk. Max takes their information, explains how it's gonna go through the process, uploads all the data into Salesforce, as well as transcripts and summaries of what the person discussed. And then the actual human advisor comes in and calls them back, right? Just that part used to take hours upon hours upon hours from real human advisors. And now we can delegate that to AI without delegating the actual important part the human experience. Okay, that's the success story. But this didn't just come out of nowhere, right? This required actual strategic planning and ideation. So let's go through the three steps that are required to make a project successful in this. The first one is scope for impact. Be very targeted in what you wanna do. You know, start simple, find those workflows that take a lot of time and low judgment. If you're able to find those, you're great. After that, after you build trust with your customers, then you can go into more complex solutions. Second thing, very, very important, is to meet the customers where they're at. I actually wanna read a quote from our customer here because I think it really embodies what I'm trying to tell you. We started with a simple question. What if we could use AI to unlock support for the people who need it most at the exact moment when they're ready to engage? This isn't about pushing AI in a place it doesn't fit, right? This isn't a try, try to fit customers into AI. This is about actually, how do we bring AI to customers to the exact moment they're ready to engage? Don't overdo it, don't overthink it. What's the simplest way that we can bring AI to customers as opposed to customers to AI and try to fit them into a place they don't wanna be. So what does this mean? Choose the right location for AI. If your customers are in WhatsApp, you know, have a conversational agent going to WhatsApp. If your customers are mostly on the phone, you know, create voice to voice systems. If your customers are in text, SMS, and they mostly use that, put it in there. And in this case, when we did, the customers are mostly online, all their systems were online. So they go on the website, it lives right there. Make sure the AI, your customer support, lives where your customers wanna be. And also make sure you understand their needs and their patterns, right? When you're talking to people that need financial help, this is a very, very sensitive topic, right? They might not have all the information ready to go. So by having an online system instead of a phone system, you know, they can go and come back whenever they're ready to fill out the forms. Things like financial information, bills, healthcare, those requires you to gather a lot of documents. And if you were doing that over the phone, there was no way that you could actually complete an onboarding without stopping and then having to call again. People don't wanna do that. So meet people where they're at. The third one is have humans in the loop by design. The goal is not to replace humans. The goal is to have fewer but higher value conversations with humans as opposed to 
lots of human conversations of low value, right? How do we make sure our humans, our people are driving the most value as possible and helping customers as much as they can? In this case, onboarding doesn't give you that much value. But talking to people and understanding how they can go from step A to B and having that advisory to them, that's where the human connection happens, right? So focus on the human element as well. Don't neglect it. Again, the goal is to have fewer but higher value conversations with humans rather than lots of human conversations with low value. This is where AI can turbocharge your business and your customer support division. The cool thing about this was that because we had this experience where the AI was doing you know, all the qualification, all the data gathering, and they put it into CRM, and then the actual human advisors were able to access the information. Once they had this information and they called the customers back, they were ready for action. They knew exactly what they needed to do. You know, and that's great. When you pick up the phone and somebody can just help you, right? That increases customer satisfaction by huge amount. And that's what you want as a customer, right? You want help. You don't want to just wait in line forever and then nobody understands you and that sucks, right? Like you want to pick up the phone, pick up a message, and get an answer. That's it. So it's not just about getting answers, but the time required to get that answer decreased as well. So we're all happy here. So those three things, you know, number one, scope for the right problem. Number two, meet people where they're at. And number three, have a human in the loop is what separates failed pilots from actual scalable solutions. But if you don't know where to start, we're actually here for you. We have an AI ideas generator. What this does is you go in, you go into the link below, you put in the problems, the pain points that you have in your business, and it will spit up ideas on how you can use AI and strategy to solve those pain problems. Like I said, the link is below. But just a quick intro if you don't know me yet. My name is Francisco. I'm the head of strategy here at AE Studio. I've talked to hundreds of executives and startup founders over the last few years in order to help them develop the right AI solutions the right way. At AE Studio, we're not just about strategy, but also implementation. And we bring those two very, very close together. We have software development, data scientists, machine learning engineers, technical product managers, designers, UI, UX people, everything, you name it. We can build whatever you want. We specialize in ideating, implementing, and deploying high impact projects that actually change how your business operates. Okay, so we've got those three already, right? Let's go into the next step, which is how do we implement guardrails and reduce risk? Right, that's very, very important whenever you're having a customer serving application. The first thing you need to do when creating an AI advisor or an AI customer support agent is to figure out the brand and the tone. This means you need to codify the persona that this AI agent will be, right? It has to reflect your company values and the style in which you do business, right? In this case, Income Max, they're a very polite, very nice UK based operation. So we define Max to really reflect the values of Income Max. It's really the ability of having an AI with a human heart. That was the summary of it. When we created Max, we basically tried to copy and clone the actual advisors that were helping people. These were English people, very nice, very polite, but also firm, right? And by actual interviewing them, shadowing them, and seeing how they were actually handling problems with people, we were able to extract their persona, their essence, so that then we could train this AI model to act like them. So tone and branding is very, very important, and it will reflect how your customers will see you. The other thing, this is everybody's worst nightmare, right? You, you get a customer support agent, it's in front of people, and then it acts erratically, or the people themselves act erratically. People who are in a tough place can bring tough conversations. They can say things like, I don't wanna be here anymore. I don't wanna do this anymore, I need to escape. You know, you can see the connotations from that. What we develop were topic sensitive scripts, their actual advisors use when dealing with these problems to try to channel that energy, to try to channel those questions into the right place, right? Always have those guardrails around tough conversations because people will always try to either break your product or genuinely be in a tough place. So make sure you have that integrated into your system. The one thing you can do is wing it and not do this. You know, it's gonna be a problem. Make sure you have those guardrails and those scripts. The next thing you need to do to reduce risk and put those guardrails around your AI agent is to be very transparent. This is an actual AI agent. You know, most people know, but not everybody. You need to be very transparent that there's an AI agent that's helping you. Don't pretend to be a person. People absolutely hate that. And if they discover that, they would not like you. Tell them, hey, we're an AI agent. You can escalate to a human if you need to, but I'm here to help you and this is gonna make your process faster. Always ensure you tell them why this is valuable and why they should engage with an AI. Don't try to hide it, be upfront about it. People will appreciate that. 
Last thing, you have to set certain boundaries and that depends on your business, right? Just like you would set boundaries with your employees or with certain scripts of your customer support agents, you have to do so here. You need to be very clear what this AI can do and in what it can't do, how they can help them and how it can help them. And then very make a very clear statement of when they should go to an actual human. By being transparent about this being AI, by setting those transcripts and those scripts of redirecting people to the right place in tough conversations, and by setting that brand control, all that you do is you increase trust. And by increasing trust, you improve the customer experience. The one thing that you don't want to do is reduce trust. So make sure you do this four things in order to increase trust and reduce risk. Okay, but what about accuracy, right? That's obviously going to reduce trust if it's not accurate, right? And I actually have this as a separate section because it deserves it. It's one of the most important things we're implementing AI solutions. So in order to increase accuracy, you need to do three things. One is to gather trusted sources and feed them into the context of the large language model. If you have tons of information, you can create a database that then the LLM can access, right? But make sure these trusted sources actually explain and are able to answer customer questions. You know, in this case, we actually had to input a 400 page document into the context of the AI, right? This is not simple. You have to get this document separated into topics, into concepts, put it into a database such that whenever a customer came in and asked a question related to that 400 page document, the AI could learn how to access that data and then feed it to the customer. Also very important, part of this as well is providing references in the UI and also telling people, hey, the AI might make mistakes. Again, the transparency is very, very important going back to our previous section. Second, when it comes to accuracy, it's not just finding the right documents, but being able to update in the right time and the right place. Make sure your documents are up to date and then there's a way to update those documents as well. You know, you don't want last year insights, you want today's insights. Make sure your database and your context and the answers to the questions of your customers are up to date. And the third thing you need to do to increase accuracy and make sure your model is accurate in answering questions and what it says is to have a test harness. This is what separates pilots from actual production grade systems. What is a test harness? Basically, it's have an evaluation of your large language model, right? How would it answer these questions? Have a set, have a test set, validate it against it, try it against that, have conversations with it. You know, if it's able to answer the questions 95% of the time and it's able to do this the right way, it passes and it goes into production. If it doesn't, well, you have to improve it, right? By actually having a metric of accuracy, that's how you get an accurate model. So far, we found the right problem to solve. We increase trust with customers. We're making sure a model is accurate, right? What's next? Compliance. Compliance is always seen as a roadblock, and for a good reason, of course. But also, it's a way to reduce risk and increase the adaptability of your model. So don't treat it as a roadblock, treat it as a feature. In this case, our customer was in the UK, and we were dealing with sensitive information. So we had to follow the GDPR rules. By understanding what these are, and by building and setting up the architecture of the AI agent with GDPR in mind, with other laws in mind, we didn't just increase trust within our company, but also with the customers. That means they're more willing to share, more willing to participate. And again, trust increases, customer experience increases. When there's time to deploy it, there's no roadblocks. We don't have to redesign anything. It's ready to go. Okay, we've built this thing. It's compliant. It increases trust. It answers questions. It's great. How do we measure it? How do we make sure it's successful? Right, this section right here is about how do we create and find the right KPIs to measure for success. There's many ways to measure success here, and I'm just going to give you a list of what worked for us as well as something that I could see helping other people. And by the way, these KPIs are not just being measured whenever you deploy. This can be and should be measured during the development of the project. Okay, the first one is very, very simple. It's time to qualify, which if I were to generate the, and generalize this would be time saved. How much time does it take to put one person through a process from end to end? In our case, it's from qualification, right? From start to end of qualification. How much time that took a per normal person versus how much that took the AI and how many people were actually able to onboard. So time to qualify, measure that. Okay, second one is measure latency. Slow answers, decrease trust, increase frustration and make people leave your product. And don't just measure, you know, the average latency, measure the latency in the worst case scenarios. We call this like P95 statistic, which means what's the latency for the slowest 5% of cases, right? The worst case scenario here. And if you're able to keep that low, you're good. You know, there's always going to be, you know, exceptions to the rule. But if you have 95% of your cases be faster than a certain latency, you're good. Next one is accuracy. You know, we talked about measuring accuracy in a test set before going into production. But there's a difference between that and what people are actually asking in production in real life. Make sure that you audit these calls, audit these interactions, and that they're accurate. If they're not, again, put that into the test set, make sure you, you capture that and keep that up to date. Next one, simple customer satisfaction. Make sure you always measure that and have that 
as part of your KPIs. You know, if that decreases, you have a problem. Make sure that's up all the time. The next one is containment rate or human escalation rate, right? How many people, how many times people are actually asking the AI to go to a human? You want to keep this low, but also you want to be realistic. You got to have a healthy escalation rate because otherwise people will rage. You know, there might be answers and questions that you didn't consider when building this thing and people genuinely need help. Give them an out for that, right? Increase trust always. This last KPI, it's, a, it's one we didn't consider at the beginning, but then actually became very, very helpful, which is look at unanswered questions. How many times did the AI did not know the answer? And why is this important? Well, going back to trust, going back to boundaries, you know, in this in the previous section, your AI shouldn't be able to answer all questions. How many times did it deflect? How many times did it actually genuinely did not know the answers and say so? Again, Increase trust, but also prevent giving bad answers. And of course, here, the actual level, you need to test it out yourself. What's a healthy amount of unanswered questions? And you can correlate that to containment rate, healthy escalations, to accuracy, to customer support satisfaction. All these things go together and you can play around with them, but you need to measure them to understand how your model is behaving. And again, this is the last one, but maybe the most important, at least for your bottom line, is measure the impact. In this case, the impact that we measured wasn't just time saved, but actual help to deliver to customers. How much money did we get customers that went through this AI system in order to help them with their financial problems? And like I said at the beginning, this was a 10 to one ratio. For each dollar they invested into the system, they were able to qualify and get about $10 of return for each one of their customers. So to summarize, what gets measured gets improved. If you don't measure it, you can't improve it. Okay, so you've got all this strategic insight on how to start one of these projects. But now we need to get practical, right? How do I prepare for kickoff? By doing this before starting your technical implementation, you're going to save yourself tons of back and forth, tons of time between your technical team and your product team. First thing you need to get are sample conversations. Get 10 to 15 scripts or happy paths of how do you want the conversation to go. If you're not able to provide your technical team and thus the AI with the right scripts, the right happy paths, the right tone, the right brand, the right scripts on how to manage difficult questions, then they're not gonna have any idea of how to do it correctly. Then you're gonna have a back and forth where they're gonna create something, it's gonna be wrong, you're gonna tell it's wrong, they're gonna be frustrated, they don't understand why, you don't, you can only say, hey, I feel it's wrong, but I don't know why. You need to have real scripts of real conversations, of happy paths of what you want the conversation to look like. Gather them. Of course, you don't need 100. You need the 10 to 15 to really get started. Second thing, source of truth. If you want your AI to answer questions, you need to give it the answers to those questions. Find a source of truth that's up to date and actually answers those questions. If you have that ready, you can give it to your technical team and then they can implement that. The next thing is understand, again, going back to point one, how much you want to automate and when is a good starting point and a good ending point. If you have that, you're good. But also make sure that you have the right requirements for when to escalate to a human. You want to have that very, very clear, because if you don't have it clear, the AI won't either, right? Have that structured, ready to go. And the last thing that we need to talk about as you prepare for kickoff is that you need to have your team on board. Having your team pulling in a different direction is one of the main reasons why AI projects fail. I actually have a full video on all the reasons why AI and software development projects fail. You can find it in the description. But anyways, having your team pulling in the, in the right direction is critical. Politics will always defeat technology or strategy. People are the most important thing here. How do we get the team to pull in the right direction, right? In this case, with Incon Max, we realized that the goal of the founders wasn't just to shrink the company, but it was to expand it. How do we reduce this boring workflows that these people, these customer support agents were having to do every day? How do we reduce that and then have them work in the right thing, the human relationship? Because they loved their job, because they loved what they were doing, and because they didn't want to do that boring part, then automating that was completely easy. They were on board, they were ready to go, and they were helping us as we went through. So don't ignore that human element. Have your team bought in from top to bottom. So we're done, right? We've gone through how to increase trust, how to find the right problem, how to meet people where they're at, how to increase compliance, how to do accuracy, how to have your team bought in. If you're able to do all these things, you'll have a very successful AI customer support agent. But not just that, you'll increase customer satisfaction and elevate your customers and your internal people. So it's a success all around. If you need help in strategy, in implementation, in finding the right team, in fixing a broken project, we're here for you. The link to talk to us is in the link below. And also the next video will be somewhere around the screen. Click on it and I'll be waiting for you on the other side.